السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم اغفر لنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين In today's session uh, of part three of Principles of Religion, we are going to talk about a topic that uh, some people do not like to mention. Or they don't like to talk about because they get scared of it. If they hear anyone talk about it, they would say, let's please change the subject. In fact, when the heart is a good heart, is a sound heart, when someone understands the reality of our topic of today, and perhaps uh, uh, he, he, uh, prepares, uh, prepares himself for it, then the person would love to hear about it. And he would love to be reminded of it constantly. I'm sure you know by now that our topic of today is remembrance of death. Before we dig any deeper into our topic, I would like to mention something about death itself. And to understand the real meaning of death. So, in order to get a deeper understanding of the meaning of death, we have to start with the following two narrations of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من أشد أمتي لي حبا ناس يكونون بعدي يود أحدهم لو رآني بأهله وماله. So the most, the most loved of people by me from amongst my ummah would be those who would come after me. But everyone amongst them would have the keenest desire to catch a glimpse of me even at the cost of his family and wealth. So this means that he would sacrifice his family, his wealth, just to have a glimpse of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa In fact, death means to leave everything in this dunya, your family and your wealth, and to transit to the next life. So death will be doing us a favor, actually. It's the fulfilling of the desire of the true lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he just mentioned, Hadith, they would leave everything behind just to have a glimpse of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And who is giving them this favor? Death. Because death is leaving family, wealth, leaving everything and going. Now this would lead us to something else actually. which is the second narration. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تحفة المؤمن الموت The gift to a believer is death. This means that death is a real gift. It is by, it is the means by which the believer gains introduction to the delights of paradise. 
So he will continually be rejoiced by looking at his final destination in paradise while he is still in his grave for the whole period of Barzakh. And Barzakh is the, the transit time between death and resurrection. We were brought to this dunya on one condition. Everyone who is born is going to die one day. There is a lifespan for each and every person. Some live long and some die very young. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Nahl, Ayah 70, Wallahu khalaqakum thumma yatawaffakum. Allah created you, then he will take you in death. وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ أَرْضَ لِلْعُمُرِ لِكَيْ لَا يَعْلَمَ بَعْدَ عِلْمٍ شَيْئًا And amongst you is he who is reserved, who is, uh, who is left to live long to the most decaying old age so that he will not know a thing after having had knowledge. You see so many old people, they lose their, their intellect, they, they lose their mind. Inna Allah alimun qadir. Indeed, Allah is knowing and competent. Now the question is, what happens? What are the, the steps? of death and I mentioned that death is giving us a favor and we will see how death is giving us a favor okay this will happen shortly after we talk uh, into the steps of death this starts with agonies with pain. And Aisha radiallahu anha narrated that رأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو بالموت وعنده قدح فيه ماء وهو يدخل يده في القدح ثم يمسح وجهه ثم يقول اللهم أعني على منكرات الموت أو على سكرات الموت so Aisha radiallahu anha said, I saw the Prophet when he was dying. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had a drinking cup containing water and he would put his hand into the cup and wipe his face. Then he, he says, Oh Allah, help me to bear the pain of death or help me to pain, to, to bear the pangs of death, the agonies of death. And this is the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So with death, the ruh or the soul leaves the body. What happens after death? So death is the departure of the person's soul and it's ascent to heaven after a person dies. So the soul leaves the body and ascends to heaven. If a person is, is one of the people of, of righteousness, of piety, the gates of heaven are opened for him so that the soul can ascend to paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that it be placed in green birds and if it's not like that, it returns to the lowest of the low. So the, the good soul, the sound soul will be in green birds. But if the soul is not good, then it will return to the lowest of the low. The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, informed us about 
the moments of the soul's capture and ascension. قول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن العبد المؤمن إذا كان في إقبال من الآخرة وانقطاع من الدنيا نزلت إليه ملائكة بيض الوجوه كأن وجوههم الشمس معهم كفن من أكفان الجنة وحنوط من حنوط الجنة So when the believing servant is looking forward to life after and he's not caring about this world, this vanishing world, so at the time of death, what happens? The angels with radiant faces ascend to him. As if their faces were the sun because of this uh, radiant faces they have. So with them, a shroud from the shrouds of paradise and perfume from the perfume of paradise. So what do they, the angels do? They sit there as far as the eyes can see. حتى يجلس عند رأسه. Then the angel of death comes and sits at his head. فيقول: أيتها النفس الطيبة، خرجي إلى مغفرة من الله ورضوان. So the angel of death would say: O oh pure soul, come out to forgiveness from Allah. And his pleasure. So what happens? قال فتخرج تسيل كما تسيل القطرة من في السقاء. فيأخذها فيأخذها فإذا أخذها لم يدعوها في يده طرفة عين حتى يأخذوها. فيجعلونها في ذلك الكفن وذلك الحنوط فيخرج منها كأطيب نفحة مسك وجدت على الأرض. So, what happens? Now the angel said, O oh pure soul, come out for, to forgiveness from Allah and his prayer. Then he says, so it comes. It comes out flowing as a drop flows from the mouth of a water skin. So it comes out very easily. So the angel of death takes it, and when he takes it, they don't leave it in his hand for a blink of an eye until they take it. The angels take it. So what do they do? They put it in the shroud that they brought with them. And they put the perfume. And there comes out of it something like the best scent musk found on the face of earth. So, قال فيصعدون بها فلا يمرون بها على ملأ من الملائكة إلا قالوا ما هذه الروح الطيبة؟ فيقولون فلان ابن فلان بأحسن أسمائه التي كانوا يسمونه بها في الدنيا. So what happens? They, the angels, would ascend with this soul, the pure soul that they have, and they do not pass by a group of angels except that they say, what is this good soul? And the, the, they would say, so and so, son of so and so, by the best of his names that he used to be called in dunya. Allahu Akbar. I want you while I'm saying this to imagine that it's our soul, our good soul that is going out with the angels. So what happens now? فينتبهون فينتهون بها 
إلى السماء الدنيا فيستفتحون له فيفتح لهم فتقوم الملائكة برفع الأرواح وتجعلها بين يدي الله سبحانه وتعالى فإن كانت من أهل الفلاح والسعادة يأمرهم الله سبحانه بأن يسيروا بها ليرى الإنسان الصالح مقعده من الجنة So they take it to, to the lowest heaven and ask for permission to enter. And permission is granted. Then the angels raise the soul and place, place the, raise, they raise all souls that they have with them. So they raise them and they place them before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now if the soul is one of the people of success and happiness, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the angels to take these souls so that the righteous people may see their seeds in paradise. فتسير بها الملائكة في الجنة So the angels would take, would take the soul in paradise. على قدر ما يغسل الميت So how long will they go around in paradise? As per the amount of time that the dead person is washed and shrouded. Okay, now. وعندما ينتهي تغسيل الميت وتكفينه تعود الروح بين جسده وكفنه. person after he was washed and shrouded between his body and his yes when when the, the body is carried in the coffin and Now, when they reach, when uh, uh, they, they reach the place of the prayer, and uh, then he is buried, what happens after the, the person is buried? Now he's buried. So his soul returns to him, and he is seated in his grave. With his soul and body. No. So what happens? What's next? وبعد أن يوضع الإنسان في قبره. So after the person by the two angels, Munkar is now going to tell us what this conversation that happens between a dead body who has his يقول رسول الله وضع في قبره وتولي ذهب وذهب أصحابه حتى إنه لا يسمع قرع نعالهم. So this is the narration by Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. When the servant is placed in his grave and his companions turn away, he hears the sound of their footsteps leaving. So when this happens, أتاه ملكان فأقعداه فيقولان له. Two angels 
come to him and make uh, make him sit and they say to him what do they say to him they would say what do you say about this man be careful about this man so what happens now with death as we mentioned there is a favor so death is the the the, the incident that would make us see sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our grave so if we go back to the first hadith that we said, a believer would like to leave everything behind, his family, his wealth, everything, just to see Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And who has given him this chance? Death. Because death may... So what's happening now? So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi is in front of us. If a person knows Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi in this dunya, if he knows about him, if he read about him, if he read his seerah, if he learned about his life, about him as a father, as a, as a commander, as a grandfather, as a leader, as a prophet, then... If, if he was sending salawat all the time to him, then during his life he was connected to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he will say, oh, this is Habibi. So when the angels would ask him, what do you say about this man? The answer would be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He knows who this person is. فيقول, I bear witness. So this person adds, I bear witness that he is the servant of Allah and his messenger. So they say to him, فيقال, انظر إلى مقعدك من النار. أبدلك الله به مقعدا من الجنة. Look at your seat in hellfire. Allah has replaced it for you with a seed in paradise. So he will see both seeds and he will he will be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has replaced his seed in hellfire with his seed in paradise. But the disbeliever or the hypocrite when he will be asked by the angels, by Munkar Wanakir, what do you say of this man? He will say, I don't know. Kuntu aqulu ma yaqulu nas. I was saying what the people were saying. So they would say to him, la darita wa la talait. So 
they will say you didn't know me you didn't know ثم يضرب بمطرقة من حديد ضربة بين أذنيه فيصيح صيحة يسمعها من يليه إلا الثقلين then he will be struck with an iron hammer between his ears and he will scream as, as he, will, he will utter he will say he will shout with a scream that will be heard by all except the humans and jinn So, the questioning of the two angels in the grave will be about three matters. The Lord, religion, and the Prophet And the book about four matters, actually. So, based on the, on the answer to these questions, the person's fate is determined. Either he is guided to the correct answer, and see his seat in paradise, or else he'll see his seat in hellfire if he is not guided to the correct answer. Guidance actually to the correct answer is based on the person's actions in this worldly life. Now, as for the resurrection and rising from the graves, the last day begins, the last day of a person begins with resurrection, which is the return of the person with his soul and body. So, as we mentioned that, the beginning of, of the day of judgment the beginning of the death uh, of the day of judgment is what death because after death immediately after death a person will know his place in uh, 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 in uh, after the day of judgment whether it's the paradise or hellfire so now, when a person returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so imagine that he knows where he will be. So what happens on the first day of resurrection? يَخْرُجُ النَّاسُ عِنْدَهَا مِنْ قُبُورِهِمْ حُفَاتًا عُرَاتٍ so the people emerge from their graves barefoot, they're naked. And they are led to the place where all people will be held accountable. And each person receives his just reward based on the actions he presents. What happens? Now everyone knows where he will be. Paradise, hellfire, everyone knows. Then what will happen? Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says, يُؤْتَى بِالْمَوْتِ كَهَيْئَةِ كَبْشٍ أَمْلَحْ On the day of judgment, death will be brought before, uh, before the two groups, the group of uh, uh, paradise and the group of uh, hellfire. So each one now, is placed in his seat, each one is placed in his, uh, knows his body. So death will be brought in the shape of a black and white ram. So a caller will make his call. Oh, people of paradise. So he will he will tell them. Uh, uh, so they he will call them, O oh, people of paradise. So thereupon they will stretch their necks and look carefully. The caller would say, Do you know this? They would look and they will say, Yes, this is death. By then, all of them 
will have seen will have seen it so they will have seen this uh, black and white tram then ثم ينادى يا اهل النار فيشربون وينظرون فيقولون هل تعرفون هذا فيقولون نعم هذا الموت وكلهم قد راه then it will be announced again O oh, people of hellfire they will all stretch their necks and look carefully and the caller would say do you know this and they will say yes this is death so they have seen this uh, uh, black and white ram and they know this is death by uh, and by then all of them will have seen it they use so that ram will be slaughtered. ثم يقول يا أهل الجنة قلود فلا موت ويا أهل النار قلود فلا موت. So he will say after after the uh, uh, after death is slaughtered, then the uh, the caller will say, O oh, people of paradise, eternity for for you and no death. And he will say, O oh, people of hellfire, eternity for you and no death. And it would increase the delight of the people of paradise and it will increase the grief of the people of hellfire. So now we heard the steps of death. Starting from the agonies of death. Then the soul leaves the body. Then the soul goes up into the sky. Then the soul goes back down. Then the, uh, uh, the person is put in his grave and the soul comes back to the grave uh, and it will be between the body and the uh, shroud. Then the angels will come and the uh, soul and the body will meet again and they will, the, the body, uh, this person, the dead person will be asked, what do you say of this man? Who's your Lord? What's your religion? What, what is your book? And he will give the answers. If he is guided to the right answers, then he will be of the people of paradise and he will see his seat in paradise. Otherwise, if he's if he is an, a non-believer, he will not know how to answer the questions and he will see his seat in hellfire and he will know that he will be in hellfire. So death will be slaughtered and everyone will be in eternally in his final destination. Now I want everyone to sit for some time in solitude. Remove all other thoughts from your heart, from your head, from your mind, and ponder over death. Are we ready to go and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So ponder over death with full concentration, determination. First, think of your friends and family members who have departed from this temporary dwelling before you die. They passed away and you've seen they are not in the in your world anymore. They passed one after the other. Think of where have the shapes and forms of these people gone? What great ambition, ambitions and hopes they have uh, they've taken into their graves. There are so many things that they have not fulfilled. They have so many hopes, so many aims, so many goals. They, they were not fulfilled. They were taken to the grave with them. Think of, of, their, of, of their greed and aspirations. All of expectations of wealth, fame, were hidden in their hearts. All of these are now hidden beneath sand. 
Their names have faded into oblivion. Also think of the deceased people's bodies. How beautiful they looked in the life. How delicate were their bodies. Now they have disintegrated. They've become this the sustenance for insects and worms. In fact, thinking about death creates an aversion and detachment for this world. This vanishing world. We're all going to leave everything in this world. So remembering death is vital to eliminate the love of this world from our hearts and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ هَذِ مِنْ لَذَّاتِ يعني الموت. Frequently remember the destroyer of pleasures, which is death. So remembering death, we can, we can uh, make effort to remove the veils of ego, such as anger, envy, pride, and greed, and other stuff, so that we see and understand life as ourselves. Uh, we understand uh, life, we understand ourselves and others more with, with more clarity. We're leaving everything behind. So why would why the greed, why the pride, why the anger? Why why all these characteristics that why are all these illnesses that are in the heart? We need to, clarify, to clear our heart. So death is among the very few certainties of this dunya. And if remembrance, uh, while we remember death, we come to reflect on how we use our time. Death teaches us that Amassing wealth and status are ultimately useless. Our money, our money will be of no use to us in the grave. Our wealth, our children, our life, our families, nothing will benefit us. Instead, we should focus on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on performing good deeds. Look at this narration. This is a uh, an advice from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Ibn Umar radiyallahu an. So he said, أخذ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بمنكبي وقال كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو عابر سبيل. So Ibn Umar is narrating this, this hadith and he says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took me by the shoulder and he said to me, be in this world as though you were a stranger. Or a wafer. Ibn Omar used to say, إذا أمسيت فلا تنتظر الصباح وإذا أصبحت فلا تنتظر المساء وخذ من صحتك لمرضك ومن حياتك لموتك. So, this is what Ibn Omar رضي الله عنه used to say. If you wake up then do not wait, do not expect to live. Uh, so if you, if you, in the evening, do not expect to live until the morning. And in the morning, do not expect to live until the evening. And take advantage of your health before times of sickness comes. And take advantage of your life before your death knocks your door. So the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always of his because of his mercy he wants us to to be alert he wants us to pay attention so he says to us man ahabba liqa'a Allah ahabba Allah liqa'ah 
ومن كره لقاء الله كره الله لقاءه whoever loves to meet Allah then Allah loves to meet him and whoever whoever hates to meet Allah then Allah hates to meet him and uh, Amr said يا رسول الله كلنا نكره ذكر الموت so what do you what do you mean ya rasulullah we we all hate death how 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 does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hate hate us does this is this what you mean sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says ذاك عند موته اذا بشر برحمه الله ومغفرته احب لقاء الله واحب الله لقاءه he explains the hadith من أحب لقاء الله أحب الله لقاءه. So whoever uh, loves to meet Allah, Allah loves him. So how how did Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم explain it? He says when a person is dying, if he is given the glad tidings of the mercy and forgiveness of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, then he loves to meet Allah سبحانه وتعالى, and Allah loves to meet him. وإذا بشر بعذاب الله كره الله لقاءه وكره كره لقاء الله وكره الله لقاءه. But if he is given the tidings of punishment, the news of punishment of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, then he hates to meet Allah سبحانه وتعالى. He wants to delay it, and when he hates to meet Allah, Allah hates to meet him. So what is it that benefits the dead person? أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه سيد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن مما يلحق المؤمن من عمله وحسناته بعد موته علما علمه ونشره وولدا صالحا تركه ومصحفا ورث أو مسجدا بناه أو بيتا لابن السبيل بناه أو نهرا أجراه أو صدقة أو صدقة أخرجها من ماله في صحته وحياته يلحقه من بعد موته. So the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa taala is saying the rewards of the good deeds that will reach a believer after his death are. So pay attention. These are the rewards that will benefit the, the deceased person. Knowledge which he taught. Knowledge which he spread. A righteous son whom he leaves behind because the righteous son would make dua for, 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 his, for his parents. A copy of the Quran that he leaves as a legacy. So he purchased uh, 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 copies of the Quran and placed them and he gave them to people to read. A mosque that he built. There was a mosque. He would announced that it's uh, being built, and they need donations for to complete the, the the mosque. And he pays in that mosque. So everyone who prays in that mosque, this person who donated will get the reward uh, for from the, those people. Also, a house that he built for wafers. He helped. He helped people. A canal that he dug. So what happened? He helped digging a canal. He helped people to be water, to, to get water. Or a charity he gave during his lifetime, whether he was in good health. When he was in good health. So, uh... He, he uh, spent charities, he gave charities when he was healthy, when he was uh, alive. These deeds, the reward of these deeds will reach him after his death and there will be sadaqa jariya. So if, if you teach someone, a new believer, uh, someone who converted to Islam, if you teach him Al-Fatiha, imagine that with every prayer, you are getting the reward and thawab of teaching this person the Fatiha that he is reading. Imagine. So this would be knowledge uh, that you learned and you are teaching, you are spreading. Every 
moment we live in this dunya is a moment to prepare for our death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this time. So we have to use it wisely. So to be saved on the day of judgment. Remember that one day we are all departing this vanishing world. And we will, we will take only our deeds with us. Sayyidina Umar said, amalun bila hisab, hisabun bila amal. Today you are uh, just uh, working and doing things and uh, everything. It's actions. There is no reward. Hisabun bila amal. But, but later on, in the day of judgment, there won't be any, any actions. There won't be any work. There won't be any work. There is reckoning for you, the deeds you did during your your life. Whoever finds good at the end, then he should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if he finds otherwise, then he should blame himself only. He had the chance in this dunya, but he lost his chance. It was a long time that he lived. So he did not. He did not care for the day after. He did not care for the next life. يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ تَوَدُّ لَوْ أَنَّ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَهُ أَبَدًا بَعِيدًا This is Surah Al Imran, Ayah 30. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the day, day of judgment, during that day, every soul will find what it has done of good, of good uh, present before it. And what it has done of evil, it will also be presented before it. It will, it will wish, this, this soul will wish that between itself and that evil, there was a great distance. So the person would regret doing any evil action, any evil thing in this dunya. So remembrance of death softens the heart. It increases us in Iman. It makes us in full reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a full cure to all diseases of the heart to laziness, to anxiety, to depression, to misery. Just remember death. One day, everything we are living in is going to stop. So by remembering death, the love of the world departs from the heart. And when this connection is terminated. So what will happen? No connection to this dunya anymore. Death. Death stopped us in this dunya. That was the final breath that we are going to breathe. The angel of death would come to a person. He will say to him, I looked everywhere for you for uh, 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 one morsel, one bite. I didn't find any food for you in this dunya anymore. I checked uh, the air that you are breathing. There is, there is no more for you. So I'm taking you. That's it. Everything stops. The connection is terminated in this with this dunya. So let's let's terminate the love of this dunya before it is terminated for us. Let's stop the bad influence of dunya from conquering our heart. 
We want our heart to be connected only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to Quran, to dhikr, to, to everything, to salawat, to everything that will save us on the day of judgment. So when this connection with this dunya is terminated, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be attained. It will make us always alert that one day we are where uh, uh, one day we are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are on a one-way journey. So we have to be ready. If we are traveling, we pack our suitcases, we pack our hand handbags, we pack our, we pack our backpacks, we we get prepared. So we want to prepare for meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to prepare so that we will be of the group whom say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them in the Quran many times. Anhum wa anh. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. So, Ya Allah, we highly depend on you, Ya Allah, to guide us to whatever will make you pleased with us on the day of judgment. To make our transition from this dunya an easy transition. To make our final words in this dunya, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna sayyidana muhammadan abduhu wa rasoolah. Until we meet next week, inshallah, I send my salam and your salam to our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.